Hello everyone, I'm CJ Wellerman. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below and we kindly ask you please help keep our show going and growing by supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash CJ Wellerman. Now let's get into it. The FIFA World Cup produced two stunning revelations. Firstly, that the Muslim world remains firmly united behind the Palestinian liberation cause. And secondly, Germany has become the Western world's number one attack dog for the criminal Israeli regime. We also learned Germany has become the most dangerous country in Europe to be a Muslim, which we will delve into in a moment. But first, let's take a look at how Germany responded to Palestine being declared the unofficial winner of the 2022 World Cup. It not only accused the Moroccan team of anti-Semitism in response to its players flying the Palestinian flag, but also compared them to ISIS. The Moroccan football national team has been under the irritation. On the image, three players with the Moroccan flag are waving their arms their arms and stretch their right finger nach oben. That is a gruß, den sich auch der sogenannte Islamische Staat angeeignet hat. The Kämpfer posieren with their geste häufig nach. Apparently, Germany didn't get the memo that footballers from Christian countries also give visible thanks to God. Only a demented fool could take offense to such a display of humility and grace. But then again, we are talking about Germany, a country that wants you to conveniently forget it not so long ago exterminated 6 million Jews while it provides political, financial and moral support to the self-proclaimed Jewish state today. Germany has also accepted the bogus Israeli claim that any criticism of the criminal Israeli occupation is inherently anti-Semitic. In 2019, it became the first European country to criminalize the boycott Israel movement. And in breaking news, the German parliament, the Bundestag, has just passed an unprecedented piece of legislation condemning the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement known as the BDS. They deemed BDS anti-Semitic and illegal. This makes Germany the first and only country in the world to criminalize the BDS movement. Earlier this year, Germany outlawed pro-Palestinian protests and gatherings that honor the victims of the Palestinian Nakba. Yes, the country responsible for the Jewish Holocaust has banned Palestinians from remembering the Palestinian Holocaust of 1948, the year Jewish militias ethnically cleansed 800,000 Palestinians and liquidated more than 500 Palestinian towns and villages. So what's going on in Germany? Well, to put it simply, German guilt over the Holocaust has been systematically outsourced to Palestinians, Arabs and Muslims, who have been smeared by the German state as inherently anti-Semitic by default which is utterly absurd given Muslims peacefully coexisted with Jews for centuries in the Middle East prior to European colonial rule. And let's not forget that anti-Semitism originated in Christian Europe, not the Muslim world. In fact, Tom Friedman, Jewish American columnist in the New York Times, told me in this very chamber last week that he believed had Muslims been running Europe in the 1940s, six million extra Jews would still be alive today. So I'm not going to take lessons in anti-Semitism from someone who's here to defend the Judeo-Christian values of a continent that murdered six million Jews. You see, you see, the German people have become so brainwashed by Israeli propaganda that they're actually starting to believe the Palestinians were responsible for Auschwitz. Because for years, Israel has exploited the tragedy of the Holocaust to justify war crimes against Palestinians. Jewish American academic Norman Finkelstein, whose parents survived the Nazi extermination camps, explains here. Member of my, every single member of my family on both sides was exterminated. Both of my parents were in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. And it's precisely and exactly because of the lessons my parents taught me and my two siblings that I will not be silent when Israel commits its crimes against the Palestinians. And I consider nothing more despicable than to use their suffering and their martyrdom to try to justify the torture, the brutalization, the dem demolition of homes that Israel daily commits against the Palestinians. German hostility towards the Palestinians is taking place at the same time the European nation is witnessing the re-emergence of the far right, which has been mobilized by anti-Muslim sentiment, whipped up in response to the Syrian refugee crisis during the past decade. 
To put it bluntly, in the eyes of today's Nazis, Muslims have become the new Jews. Because this is what Germany looked like in the 1930s, and this is what it looks like today. Muslims here may be feeling less comfortable after a recent wave of anti-Islamic protest in Germany. Every Monday night since October, a group called Patriotic Europeans Against the Islamization of the West has been holding a street protest. Here in Dresden, the latest rally attracted an unprecedented 18,000 supporters. Needless to say, these anti-Islam protests are inspiring anti-Muslim violence, culminating with the right-wing terrorist attack on Turkish migrants at two shisha bars two years ago. But a new report shows anti-Muslim sentiment has become measurably worse since then. It found that nearly 50% of the German population believe Islam is not compatible with German society, that 30% support criminalizing the practice of Islam, and that 44% say the country's security agencies should monitor Muslim organizations. This attitude was on display when German fans at the World Cup use Islamophobic smears against Arabs and Muslims. What this means is the mainstream German population has become indistinguishable from the far right, as calls for de-Islamization go nationwide, with the aim to silence and cancel as many Muslim voices in the public sphere as possible, and under the threat of violence. For Germany's 5 million Muslims, Kristallnacht has become an almost everyday occurrence, as illustrated by the more than 800 attacks on mosques since 2014, along with the more than 900 attacks against Muslims during the past two years. And lest we forget that earlier this year, a gunman opened fire in a mosque in the city of Hale. And then two years earlier, 12 members of a neo-Nazi group were arrested while plotting to carry out a mass casualty attack against several mosques, similar to the 2019 attack on two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. Then last month, the graves of 25 Muslim children were vandalized in the city of Hanover. But even though this constituted one of the most disgusting forms of hatred against Islam and Muslims, the attack went largely ignored by the German media. Things have gotten so out of hand that Nazis are now threatening white Germans who defend the rights of Muslims and refugees. Racist thugs and neo-Nazis have been gathering outside the building since the refugees moved in. Daniel films their gatherings. Molitos says they're trying to intimidate them. He's received death threats himself. And the German government is making an already bad situation worse for Muslims by going over the top in its unfettered support for Israel. Because in automatically conflating criticism of Israeli government policies with anti-Semitism, it paints a target on the back of every Muslim citizen who sympathizes with the Palestinian people. For these reasons, Germany has become the most dangerous country in Europe to be Muslim. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain and grow this show without your help and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are and stay blessed.